Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty of costs. Okay, now we're just going to focus on two main costs in this video fixed and variable costs. Okay, what they are and how we can actually map them on a diagram. Alright, so let's first look at fixed costs. It's very important to understand the definition of fixed costs. Okay, fixed costs are costs that do not vary with output. Okay, so as you increase production or decrease production, whatever it might be, your costs, your fixed costs stay exactly the same. Costs you have to pay regardless of how much you produce. So if you look at examples of fixed costs, it will make logical sense. So fixed salaries for staff over a given year, okay, or, or maybe over a given, given time period, maybe two years, three years, you have to pay a fixed salary to staff regardless of how much you're producing. So salaries are a fixed cost. Advertising, okay, it doesn't matter how much you're producing, you have to pay your advertising costs. Rent, again, if you have a factory, regardless of how much you're producing, you have to pay the rent on your factory. Interest repayments, insurance, these are all costs that do not vary with output. Okay, so regardless of how much you produce, you have to pay these costs. Now, your total fixed cost, therefore, over a given time period, over a given output level, okay, will just be a horizontal straight line. There will be a fixed amount in total. Okay, so maybe for a firm, it will be £100,000 total fixed cost. And over a range of output, that cost will stay exactly the same. Okay, in total. On average, however, on average, as you produce more and more, you can spread your fixed costs over a greater range of output. So your average fixed costs will start to fall as you produce more and more and more. It makes logical sense. If you're producing one unit of something and your total fixed costs are £100,000, your average is going to be £100,000. But if you're producing more and more and more, let's say 100 units, your average fixed costs will fall. Okay, obviously 100,000 divided by 100, etc. will be a, a much lower number. Okay, so your average fixed costs for, okay, as you produce more and more, you spread your cost, your fixed cost, over a larger range of output, which explains the shape of the curve. Okay, so as you produce more, the curve kind of gets flatter. Let's look at variable costs. Okay, now, va variable costs are just the opposite of fixed costs. So variable costs, by definition, do vary with output. Okay, so the costs vary with output. So the wages you pay, you know, you pay wages hourly. So maybe you can raise or reduce what wages given how much you're producing. So if your worker is being really, really productive, if you need them to produce more and more, you can pay them a higher wage. Okay, but it's very much linked to production. Raw material costs, similarly, if you're producing more and more, you'll need more raw materials that will cost more. Okay. Fuel costs, again, as you get bigger and bigger in size as a firm, you'll need to transport your goods more, which will mean higher fuel costs, and similarly, if you're producing less, lower fuel costs. Okay, so these are all costs that do vary with output. Now, your average variable cost curve, okay, actually can be explained via diminishing returns. Okay, it's heavily influenced, this curve, by the productivity of labour again. And it comes back to similar reasons as we talked about for diminishing returns. I want to now explain why. Okay, so let me just rub out our fixed costs. And this is the beauty of short-run cost curves. A lot of them will go back to the same point again. Okay, but this one probably um, less obviously than, than previous, uh, you know, than, than other curves we're actually going to talk about. So, the best way for me to explain the shape of this curve is again by using an example, a numerical example. Right? So let me make an assumption at the start. Okay? Let's take a variable cost. Okay? Let's take a labour cost, okay? which will be wages. Okay? Wages are a variable cost. And let's assume that uh, it costs um, 100 pounds Okay, to hire each worker. Okay, that's just an assumption I'm going to make. Okay, so we've got a firm. The firm pays the worker a wage, and wage is a variable cost, pays each worker a hundred pounds. Right? Let's hire some workers. So worker one okay, costs hundred pounds. And let's just make up a number. Let's say that worker produces 10 units of whatever good it might be. So that worker himself produces 10 units. So the average variable cost for that worker is just the cost of the worker in terms of the wage divided by how much that worker produces. So 100 divided by 10, the average variable cost is just 10 pounds. Okay? 
Now we're assuming, yes, that it costs 100 pounds to hire each worker in terms of the wage that they get, but we're also assuming that there are no other variable costs. Just keep it really simple. Let's assume that wage is the only variable cost. Okay, let's go again. So second worker, okay. In total, our variable cost will go up to 200 pounds. It costs 100 pounds to hire each worker, 200 pounds in total. Our variable costs are 200 pounds. And let's say they produce, in total, 30 units. Okay, well then our average variable cost is now £6.67. Let's keep going. Okay, so we hire three workers, £300. Okay, let's say they produce 70 units. Okay, then our ABC average variable cost is now £4.28. Keep going, we hire four workers. Okay, that costs £400. Let's say they produce 80 units. Average variable cost is five pounds. Five workers hired. Cost 500 pounds. Let's say they produce 85 units. Okay, it costs therefore, on average, average variable cost, and now five pounds 88. And that's just now, let's say we go to 10 workers hired, so let's just go right down to 10 units of labour. Okay, therefore it costs the firm a thousand pounds in variable cost. And let's say they produce a hundred units. Okay, and our average variable cost is now ten pounds. If you want to understand how these figures came about, just freeze the video and have a look at those. Okay, all we're doing is dividing the total variable cost here, which is three hundred, let's say for three workers, divide that by the number of units produced, seventy, and you'll get these end figures. Right. Now let's kind of relate these back to the curve, all right? The, K, the curve is no shape like that. In truth, the best way to learn curves is not necessarily by figures, I think. The best way to understand the shapes of curves is by logical understanding. Now, I've not just picked these units out of blind, you know, a blind air. You know, I've actually understood, I've had some understanding behind them. So, what we're doing to understand these figures is we're using the law of diminishing returns again. All right, so, just like in the previous video, we have initial gains, initial marginal gains, okay, to labour. Okay, each unit of labour is bringing in more and more, up until the gain here, our fourth worker. Okay, when we hire a fourth worker, we've got diminishing returns. Yes, that worker is still bringing in some extra stuff, but not as much as the previous guy, which is why we go from 10, we increase it by 20 to 30, by, th by 40 to 70, then only by 10. Whereas we had a 40 unit increase, we're now going to a 10 unit increase, we're seeing diminishing returns set in. For the same reasons as before, we've got, um, we maximise our utilisation of land and capital, therefore we're constrained by our fixed factors of production, um, and therefore workers are less productive, productivity starts to fall. And if you look at the figures, as a result of that, as a result of diminishing returns, our variable costs okay, start to increase once we see the constraints set in. So while we have initial marginal gains, just like we did before, we've got underutilization of, of fixed factors and we've got specialization of labor, okay, our average variable cost fall. The productivity, productivity of labor increases. So the average variable cost starts to fall. But when we're constrained and we have the problems of diminishing returns, our variable costs start to increase on average because productivity of labor starts to fall. Let's understand this on a diagram. So, Let's say we've got output along here, you can see it, and we've got our costs up there. Right, so at one unit of labour, we're making 10 units. So let's say 10 units is down here, all right? So 10 units, it costs us on average 10 pounds, or variable costs on average 10 pounds, okay? Let's say that's all the way up here. As we increase the number of, uh, number of workers, let's say to two, our average costs, our average variable costs fall to six pounds 67. So as we've gone from one to two, our average falls to £6.67. As we go to three workers, our average falls again to £4.28. Okay, so as we go to three workers, it falls to £4.28. That's just the marginal gain we talked about before. But now, we're constrained. We hire our fourth worker, the constraints set in. Okay, so our average variable cost now rises to £5. Okay, so where we were here before, we now add 
another worker, we're now only producing 80 units. Okay? So that, that then increases our variable cost to 5. Okay? We then go again. We increase our number of workers to 5, we now produce 85 units. So we just increase a little bit to here, but now our costs go up to £5.88. Okay? Let's keep going to 10 workers. 10 workers produce 100 units, so let's say that's at the end of our scale. And that costs us 100 units back up to £10 again. So very simply, the average variable cost curve can be explained by the law of diminishing returns. It's very much linked again to the productivity of labour. So while it's decreasing initially, we see increasing marginal gains. Right? So each worker is specialising. Okay? Each worker is utilising underutilised land and capital. Okay? And therefore productivity of labour increases. Okay? Which is why we see a fall in a variable cost, average variable cost, until we got a constraint. Okay, so at this point, at this level of output here, we now hit our constraint. Okay, the constraint of our fixed factors of production, which means that even though we're not increasing output, it costs us more on average to do so because our labour is not as productive as before, and that can be explained by using these figures. Alright, so in this video you've learned about fixed costs and variable costs, the different types of fixed and variable costs, and how it kind of looks on a diagram. Okay, now we're going to put them all together. I'm going to link in marginal cost and average cost. Can explain the shapes of those things too. Thank you.